Come on. Come on, go for a ride. Come on. Come on, sweetie. No! Freeze! Freeze! Come on. Come on now. Come on. No, you monkey ears! <laughs> You have pissed your last. Hey everyone, Dr. Stavros Salvatsis here. I can't emphasize enough how important it is that we as writers become absolute masters of subtext. Why? Because dialogue that sizzles with subtext jumps right out of the page and declares to the reader, I'm an accomplished writer, keep on reading. So how do we become masters of subtext? Let's wade right in. If dialogue conveys the literal meaning of the words, their denotation, subtext reveals the significance behind the words. Subtext is a far more engaging way of having characters reveal information because it shares with the reader or audience secrets that some of the characters may not be privy to. The result? We feel a little superior and more connected to the true meaning of the story. The thing to remember is that subtext never spoon-feeds the reader, as does direct dialogue. Now, there are several types of subtext through dialogue, but one of the most useful falls under the mantle of the cover-up. The cover-up may deploy any number of specific techniques, such as a change of subject, a lie, a misdirection, a question, a threat, and the like. Before we look at a great example of the cover-up in action, let's keep in mind that subtext can be revealed before, during, or after the pertinent dialogue occurs. In As Good As It Gets, we see Melvin, who despises animals and pretty much everything else, put the neighbor's dog down the garbage chute in the corridor of his New York apartment building. In this example, we already know that Malvin has done the deed before the exchange with his neighbor occurs, so we experience the subtext more acutely as a cover-up in progress. Verdell? Where is my good doggie? Verdell? Mr. Udall? Mm-hmm. Have you, have, you, uh, have you seen Verdell? What does he look like? Here, Melvin uses one of the specific techniques of the cover-up, that of asking a question to deflect suspicion. But since we already know he put the dog down the chute, we know that he is lying. To spell it out, Melvin's direct dialogue is, what does he look like? But the actual meaning to us who know better is, I got rid of your dog, but I'll lie about it so as not to get caught. Now imagine if the same scene had started not with Melvin putting the dog down the chute, but with Simon looking for his dog. Come here, sweetheart. Melvin's question about what the dog looks like would then appear as if he was merely being helpful. If the truth was revealed later, the subtext would arise introspectively in our minds. Both instances would involve subtext, but the original one is perhaps stronger because it occurs in the present. My dog with a little little face, a little adorable face, don't, don't you know what my dog looks like? Oh, I got it. You were talking about your dog. Again, because we know that Melvin is the culprit, we experience the deception more acutely. Every line promotes the cover-up, which reveals the sort of man that he is. In other words, we learn far more about his character from the subtext than direct, denotative speech can ever reveal. Such is the dramatic power of subtext. To sum it all up then, subtext conveys the deeper meaning that lies beneath direct dialogue. It often involves a cover-up of some sort on the part of the characters. Its task is to reveal information to the reader or audience, but to do it subtly. Well, that's it for now. If you learned something from this video, consider hitting the like and subscribe buttons and leaving a comment to share your thoughts and to help the channel grow. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you soon.